amazing stuff with that in Maui, but there is probably a bunch of people watching from all over the world um, who are, you know, setting up shop for the first time for that in Maui. So how do you set up your dev environment? So I thought maybe I could fit in a little bit of a practical session right after the keynote. I talked my way in here um, to, you know, also um, um, show you a little bit on what platforms are there, what platforms are supported, and how to actually set up your dev environment. What is the tools that you can use, all that kind of stuff. So um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are. I just ate dinner, but I would rather spend my time here with you than with my family and dinner. Who wants that? My name is Gerald Swisslaus. I'm working on the .NET MAUI team here at Microsoft um, as a software engineer and um, I'm coming to you live from the Netherlands where I work remotely. So just to have everyone uh, on kind of like the same page, I'm quickly going to reiterate something that David and Maddie have already talked about. How does .NET MAUI actually work? So I'm going to quickly give you, draw you a little bit of a architecture sketch of what we can uh, uh, what we can do with that at Maui. So first we have all these separate SDKs, right? We have Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows, um, all shipping separate SDKs, but it's uh, the app code that you actually want to focus on. That is your business logic. That is your billion dollar idea. That's the thing that you want to actually work on and, and be productive on. So how are we gonna get from that app code and you just focusing on that, from all the SDKs that the vendors are putting out there. Well, the first thing that we need to do is add the .NET runtime. Now from Xamarin already, we have that running for a long, long time on all these platforms. So don't worry about that for everything except Windows. It's running on Mono VM on Windows. Of course, we have the core CLR running on that, but that's not very important because I think David mentioned this as well. We now have a shared base class library and since .NET 6, uh, which you are programming, developing against, and that will sort out all the bits where it needs to go for mono or core CLR. Now, on top of that, we have where a lot of magic happens, um, the amazing teams who create all the bindings for basically one-on-one, -on -one, all the SDKs that the vendors are putting out for Objective-C, Java, all that kind of stuff, but they're making bindings and enabling us to work with all of those SDKs, all of those APIs, but now from C Sharp and .NET. So that is really cool. And on top of that, we're building .NET MAUI so that we abstract away all the little, you know, namespaces that belong to a certain platform, all the APIs that you need to know about, just have a unified API, multi-platform app UI that you can work with. And that is the only thing that you kind of have to learn to work with. So now you can focus on your app code. You have to learn how to work with .NET MAUI, which is a breeze, I promise you. And now you can suddenly deploy your app to Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows. That is really amazing. So let's talk a little bit um, about the supported platforms. There is a lot to unpack here. And you can imagine that with all the SDKs on these uh, platforms, um, that there is a lot of tools that we are trying to combine here, right? So all these tools, we need to work together. Um, and that, you know, is a lot of work for us, luckily not for you, to make that happen. So the supported platforms that you can actually develop apps for, um, is, you can see it right here. I just took this from the docs page that is down uh, below. Um, so we have support for Android 5. Hopefully, you know, all your users are way high from that, but um, we also want to support like the lower end um, devices. iOS 10, we're on the verge of seeing iOS 16 right now, so you should be totally good there. Um, for macOS, that is a more recent version, simply because we're using Mac Catalyst under the hood, um, which is an amazing technique from Apple that allows you to basically deploy your iOS app also on macOS. Um, so, you know, also those apps, you can just run on both platforms and we kind of like um, lift on that technique as well. And then you have Windows 10 as of version 18.09 um, or higher, of course, that includes Windows 11, and we're building on top of WinUI there. Now, we also have an amazing product called .NET MAUI Blazor, or Blazor Hybrid, if you will. The requirements for that are slightly higher because of like some web and, uh, rendering engines, I think. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual um, um, implications are there, but those are slightly higher, and those are all the platforms that you can build upon. Actually, we also have Tizen in here, Tizen uh, by Samsung, who are you know very good friends of ours. Their code for supporting .NET MAUI lives in our repository as well. Um, they're doing some great stuff, but I, I left it out of the presentation for now. I don't have a lot of experience with it, to be honest. Um, but, you know, for Tizen, for your fridge, for your watch, for your, um, I don't know, they make a lot of devi cool devices. Um, you can totally deploy to that as well. 
So what is the tooling that you build .NET MAUI uh, apps with? Well, it all starts with .NET 6, .NET 6 or higher, because, you know, let's be honest, .NET 7 is already on the horizon. I think we're entering the RC stage, release candidate stage of .NET 7. Um, so that is on its way in November. But right now you can download .NET 6, you can use that. And together with that, you get all the CLI tooling, right? Because .NET MAUI is a first-class citizen in .NET. So you get all that CLI tooling for free and you can just hack away with that. Is that something that you want? Is that something that you enjoy? You can totally do that. Now, on top of that, we have Visual Studio 2022 and you can see where I needed to edit my slides because I was going to say you need the preview version right now but we don't need that anymore you can just now go to 17.3 uh, which is generally available as we speak so you're probably refreshing the page breaking all of our servers doesn't matter we'll fix it and uh, you'll get all the bits but we'll have visual studio 2023 2022 let's not get ahead of ourselves um that you can use to build actual .NET MAUI apps. Now, also we have on Mac, that one still is in preview, unless I missed a very important bit here, uh, Visual Studio for Mac, also 2022. For that, you still need the preview version uh, for you know developing on a Mac and have a great experience there as well. Um, if you're going to go do it on a Mac, um, then you also need Xcode. So make sure that you, you know, check out all the nitty gritty details. I'll walk you through them in a little demo in a little bit, uh, but all the documentation pages have like a great explanation of all the tools that you need exactly and how to go through them. I can't fit it all in this 25 minute session. So I'm going to show you the gist of it, just that you've seen a little bit of where I'm going to click and what I'm going to do. Um, but then you can in all, you know, rest at home, you can just go through the docs page and follow all uh, along. Um, so at the most amazing thing, it really blows my mind. You can all do everything a lot of it at least, with a community edition. And that is enough to get you started for free. So you can just go out there, download Visual Studio, community edition. Um, you can get all the tools for free to get started with .NET Maui. So that is really, really amazing. Um, so I, I tried to capture it in a little bit of a um, graphic right here. So what you can do, so we have on like the horizontal bits, we have the target platform. So that is the platforms that you can write apps for. So that's Windows, Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Tizen. Um, and then you have like the development platform. So you can build your apps with .NET MAUI for Windows and Mac OS. And you can see kind of like, I hope it's clear with the X's um, that, you know, the, the kind of like the desktop platforms, the desktop target platforms, those are the ones that you can't really develop on one or the other. So you cannot develop Mac OS applications on Windows and you cannot develop Windows applications on Mac OS, but kind of like everything in between, you can totally do that. Now, there's always this, this hot topic of like, can you develop iOS applications on Windows? Um, yes and no, if that makes sense. Um, so you can totally do that. There's a couple of options for that right now. You can plug in, which again, totally blows my mind. I don't know how they pulled it off, the team that did this. You can plug in a physical iOS device inside of your Windows machine and with a technique called hot restart, you can just debug your application on that iOS device. You will need a paid Apple account, you will need a physical iOS device, but you can do it straight from Windows. Now, why this is so mind blowing is because technically you will still need a Mac to um, um, develop and deploy your iOS and Mac OS application. Um, it can be on the network. You don't even have to see it, which would be a shame because it's beautiful devices, but you don't even have to see it if you don't want to. You can put it in a closet, um, put a network cable in it, just have to configure it once. And then from Visual Studio Windows, you can connect to your Mac build server. That will do all the hard stuff. I think David already showed you like the remote simulator that will come up on Windows um, and you can just use it that way. You never have to see that Mac again. For Mac OS applications, not quite yet um, because you know it doesn't really use the simulator. You would have to see the desktop for that and for Windows kind of like the other way around as well. The other option, which I don't really recommend, but if you're like, you know, desperate and you want to get something moving, you can also rent physical Mac devices in the cloud. Um, not with us, sadly, but there are other services that do that. Um, and you can rent a Mac for a little bit to do your work on and then move on from there. So, <clears throat> excuse me, then some things that are good to know by platform. Um, and again, I'm going to show you a couple of these things later on in, in a little demo, but this is just the things that you can expect whenever you start working with .NET MAUI applications. And I thought like, hey, this could be good if you are watching this for the first time um, and you're wondering like, hey, what, what's going on here? So if you're going to build for Windows, if you're going to have that desktop application running on Windows, um, you want to maybe be aware 
of the Windows Home Edition. Technically, now that I'm looking at this, it's not really if you're targeting Windows, but why I put this on here is because you have a lot of virtualization stuff. Um, maybe you want to enable some Hyper-V, do some other things. That is not really supported on the Windows Home Edition. Um, I only ran into that because I was spinning up a virtual machine to test some things out. I accidentally got the Windows Home Edition just to see if I could do everything with like the lowest tier uh, products basically um, so that anyone can can join in. Um, and I ran into that. So be aware of that one, but it mostly has to do with like emulators, Hyper-V, that kind of stuff, not really targeting Windows. If you're targeting Windows, or if you're going to develop your Windows app on a Windows machine, um, then you want to enable developer mode, which is available in Windows 10 and 11. Um, it's under the settings app, then privacy and security, and then you have this little thing for developers and you will have to toggle the switch and it's going to ask you, are you really sure? So make sure that you understand the message that is popping up, the implications that it has, and then you are good to go. If you are going to start your new .NET Maui application from within Visual Studio, it's also going to suggest you this, it's going to pop up that settings application right in the page where you need to be. Um, so you know it's, it's going to guide you through that. Um, for Android, it's a little bit more complicated, uh, which if you're new to cross-platform development, Android tends to be a little bit more complicated. Um, so on, if you're running this on Windows, then very, very, that's a hard word. Virtualization is hard, right? Um, you have Hyper-V, you have like, I don't know, Haxum is what it's called on Intel. Then you have AMD processors. I don't know, I, that's way out of my depth, I don't know. Too much about that stuff, except that it's hard. It's so hard that we have a dedicated uh, docs page on uh, our Microsoft Docs to help you with, like, guide you how to do it. I'll be honest, it usually works out of the box, at least for me. I never had too many problems with it. But, um, you know, if you have a little bit more exotic hardware, then it might be something um, that you have to look into. But mostly, it should just work out of the box. Um, and if you have one or if you are going to use a physical device, but this also uh, is true for the emulator because the emulator is just, you know, the emulation of a physical device, um, you're going to have to enable developer mode, right? So on your phone, go to settings again. Um, for Android, you have to go to about phone and then tap the build number like seven times and it will pop a little message that says like, hey, tap X more times and then you're a developer. Who knew it would have been that easy? I would have gotten an Android phone, tap the build number and boom, I'm a developer. No need for school. Um, so you can just enable that developer mode like that. And then um, when you do that, you can go back to settings. You will now find the developer options. And you have to. it has a ton of options, I'll warn you. It has a ton of options, which are very handy for all kinds of debugging scenarios. But it's a lot. Uh, but one of them is USB debugging. You can also do it through Wi-Fi if that's what you want. But that's a little bit more complicated to set up. Um, the easiest thing is to just grab that charger cable, put it inside of the device, um, and then make sure that you uh, tech uh, the USB debugging that that's on. It will pop a little dialog with the RSA fingerprint so that the connection is secure, that kind of stuff. You can say, okay, and now your device should pop up in Visual Studio and you're good to go again. There are a couple of scenarios where I had to uh, install uh, separate uh, drivers. This is way back when, so I trust that this is not the case any anymore. Separate drivers from like the device manufacturer, so Samsung or whoever created the uh, Android device uh, to actually make it work for Windows, but I think those days are gone. Another really cool option which just popped in my head, I think because David mentioned it in the keynote, is Windows subsystem for Android, um, which is a app in the store, uh, the Windows, the, the Microsoft store. So you can just go to your Windows 11 installation, uh, the Microsoft store, search for Windows subsystem for Android. It's just another app that you download on your uh, Windows installation. And now suddenly you can run Android applications inside of Windows. But you can also enable the developer mode for that and use that as a pretty simplified emulator for that. Now, iOS and macOS, maybe you it shines through that I'm a little bit of an Apple fanboy here. It just works. Yay. Um, so maybe I'm a fan because it just works, right? Um, so you have to set up some things. That's a little bit hard, trickier because you need that Mac. Um, but when you do, it just works, especially if you're working from a Mac on Visual Studio for Mac, then you just plug in the device. You'd have just the list of simulators. They call the emulator simulators there. Um, and you can just 
select one and it will just work mostly out of the box. So iOS has introduced a developer mode on iOS 16, which is now in beta. Um, I, I don't think it's required for deploying applications to it yet. Um, I haven't seen it. Um, at macOS has kind of like a sandbox thing uh, where you, know, you can do all the things, which is definitely a good thing for us as consumers. But if you're a developer, you might want to take it into account because I already ran into some scenario where something worked um, when I was debugging, but not so much when I actually created a release build because it said like, hey, I need these sandbox things. And so make sure that you test your code. That's what we all do, right? Absolutely. So um, let's move on to a little demo here um, to show you how to set a couple of things up. So especially for that, I formatted my whole machine. No, no, I didn't do that. I created a virtual machine um, and I just installed Visual Studio. Um, I forgot my password. That's what I do. Um, I just installed Visual Studio for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me just get this. Come on. Why is this not working? Is this not the right machine? Oh my goodness. Okay, let me connect real quick. Um, so I just created a VM um, for this where I just freshly installed Windows. I installed Visual Studio um, and just for, should show that you know what to expect whenever you run it for the first time, basically. So we have this Visual Studio community. I downloaded the preview because I didn't know it was going to be stable. Um, and it looks very similar to this whenever you install it for the first time. I didn't want to bore you with a whole ins installation of Visual Studio. That's going to be a very boring session. Um, but whenever you do, you're going to have to check these workloads that you have to install here. So whenever you want to work with .NET MAUI, make sure that you find this beautiful new icon here, .NET MAUI multi-platform app UI development. Check that box and um, you know whatever you're else interested in, but just checking the .NET MAUI box should be enough to get you started with .NET MAUI. So whenever you do, you can now launch Visual Studio. Um, and we will find there, just before this session, I already found uh, a tweet from someone asking like, hey, are there now the templates in Visual Studio for .NET MAUI? Well, in the preview, they have been there for a long time. So if I now go in here and I check out the MAUI templates, I search for MAUI, then a handful of templates will pop up. We have the .NET MAUI app, the .NET MAUI Blazor app, and the .NET MAUI class library. So that is very, very cool. Now, if I select the .NET MAUI app, let's just go for that. MAUI app one sounds good. We already have a little selection box here for .NET 6. It's going to be added .NET 7 dotted eight in here but for now we just have dotnet six and let's click create um, and it's going to create this little new project for my dotnet maui app the one that's going to make me rich my million dollar app and i just have to keep talking while this project is generating so that's why you know when i'm Talking. All right, so it's coming up right now, and what you'll see, it's going to like restore the NuGet packages. Uh, it's going to restore all the things that it needs here. Um, the code is not really important. In fact, I'm not even going to actually um, 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 uh, run a .NET MAUI application right now. I'm just going to show you all the things that are needed to get up to the point to actually run that .NET MAUI application. So it will come up with this, which kind of looks a bit scary maybe the first time, but this is to let Visual Studio communicate with my Mac here in the network. I have a Mac right here. You could see that I switched to it just now. Um, and you can use that Mac to actually build the Mac side of your, the Mac target of your application. So allow this through your firewall. I think there might another uh, dialogue pop up here. Um, but that's all in order. That's all okay. So we have this little gold bar here, new to .NET MAUI. Click here to learn more. So I would definitely encourage you to do that if you're like a first timer and you don't know what to expect. But the important thing is here, this is the run menu. So here we, it's kind of look different from other .NET MAUI projects, for other .NET projects, right? Where you just click run basically and that's it. But now you have all these targets. So we have the Android emulators, we have Windows, we have iOS in here. And based on what you select here, different bits will get selected, will get compiled and run on the simulator or emulator that you select here. So like I said, um, let's well, let's do the Mac connection first because that takes a little bit of time maybe. So here on the, the bar, you have pair to Mac. You can also go to tools, iOS, and you have the same thing, pair to Mac. Um, and it will give you the instructions right here. So everything here is in Visual Studio. You don't need to go anywhere. See, here's the second dialogue, allow access, um, and it will guide you through here. So what we need to do is set up a little thing on Mac OS, and then we can connect to it. So let's go, okay. Let me switch over to Mac OS real quick quickly and you can go here to your system preferences and what you need to do is find sharing here we go 
and you have to select remote login. So make sure that you check that and, and that it's on here, and then make sure that your user is here in one of these uh, groups here or that your actual user is selected. And you can see here um, what your actual username is. That's a little bit different between what, says, what it says here and there. So make sure that you know that username because you need the credentials here to log in as well. So here we can say add Mac. I think my IP address is 168.177. It's going to check the SSH uh, configuration. You just need to do this once. So this is my handle everywhere. Uh, this is going to be my password. And while this is going, this pulls in all the requirements. So you have to install, well, I think you have to install Visual Studio for Mac on your Mac, um, just so that you have all the dependencies. It will pull in all the dependencies there. I'm not even sure if that's technically required. What you do have to have is Xcode installed there. You can just go to the App Store on your Mac, download Xcode, and it will be on there. But all the rest of the requirements, it will pull that in as part of um, configuring this connection, basically. So this will run in the background. I can just close it. Here, if I click on the Windows um, button, it will bring up that settings um, screen, right, to actually implement uh, or actually enable that little developer mode here. Now, with the time I got, I'm not sure if I can go through all the things here. Um, so, but this should pop up with the little settings app. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to show you is whenever you switch to the Android target, it will just say Android emulator, nothing fancy. Oh, here we are. So enable developer mode. You can click on this link and it will bring you to the right thing. Let me just close this for now and it's going to fail because of that. Um, just because I wanted, I, I'm sure that you could figure this out. Just because I want to show you what happens with the Android emulator, which we also have here. So it says generic Android emulator. Just select that. It will take a little minute to think about that. Um, and whenever it enables, you can just press, press this run button and it will see that there are no Android emulators here. You need to also read this SDK license. It will pull in the right SDKs that you need, um, accept those, accept the ones for like the emulator that you're about to do, uh, make sure that you you have admin rights. And then it will suggest to you like, hey, this is the Android device manager. This is how you install and configure Android emulators. Um, and it will suggest one for you. So basically you can just say create. Again, it will download all the bits you need. It will um, configure it and you can now run Android applications on this actual Android emulator. Now, in the meantime, this is the last thing I'm going to show so that I don't go over time. Um, oh, actually, this doesn't run in the background, so let me just close and discard this for now. But here you can see our iOS little icon is now green. So this is paired. This is ready to go. And here in my run menu, I should now see all the iOS simulators here as well that I can just um, select and run on. And this will automatically now reconnect whenever it loads a .NET MAUI uh, project. So that's all there for you, ready to go. Um, last couple of slides. Uh, well, just one actually. I got a couple of references here. The official docs, I already mentioned those. There is these great um, uh, tutorials, Dot and Maui for Beginners with James, who's doing that. Uh, Dot and Maui Learn module, which is self paced. You can just go through uh, the modules right here. And of course, there's my YouTube channel, Gerald from YouTube. I got a couple of videos on Dot and Maui and Xamarin stuff as well. So you might want to check out that. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you now know how to set up your environment for Dot and Maui and get building um, and have fun first with the rest of this .NET Conf event with the amazing lineup. Back to you, James.